welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the world of video games, movies, comics, and anything in between. This time in the Star Wars Timeline lore series, we'll continue exploring the early days of the Galactic Empire, and focus on one of the Emperor's greatest tools, a group dedicated to hunting down the Jedi survivors of Order 66, and a Jedi Knight that played a small role in the movies. This is the hunt for Jocasta Nu, briefly seen assisting Obi-Wan Kenobi find the missing planet of Kamino in the Jedi archives during the events of Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. In the original Legends lore, she met her end at the hands of Darth Vader inside the Jedi Library during the attack on the Temple in Revenge of the Sith, but in the new official canon, she presented a much larger threat and played a much more important role, planting the seeds of the future. This story begins just after Darth Vader's battle with the Jedi Master, Kirok and Phila, and the construction of his first lightsaber. Although Vader was victorious and now held the Crimson Blade of a Sith, his suit and mechanical body were heavily damaged and in need of repair. Emperor Palpatine looked upon Vader floating in a medical capsule filled with Bacta, a fluid that would accelerate the healing process and treat his injuries. His apprentice was temporarily out of commission, but all that mattered was that his mission was successful. Vader proved himself to be a true Sith. He took the life of another Jedi, and poured his hate and anger into the kyber crystal inside the lightsaber. Soon enough, the medical droids would have Darth Vader's suit repaired to its previous state, and the young Sith Lord would continue his further descent into the dark side. But suddenly, Palpatine felt a deep anger coming from within Vader. His teachings were working. Darth Vader was learning to further separate himself from his previous life as Anakin Skywalker. Darth Vader had become his armor, and no droid would lay its hands on it. Anakin Skywalker's skills as an engineer and his affinity working with mechanical parts would serve Vader well. He closed his eyes and from his medical capsule he began repairing his suit using the tools available. Vader suffered in battle due to his armor being cumbersome and restricting many of the movements he had spent years perfecting as a Jedi Knight and took the opportunity to make much needed improvements. While the Sith Lord recovered, a mysterious presence entered the ruined Jedi Temple and explored its now empty hallways. As he approached a statue depicting a Jedi Temple guard, he glared at it in anger, remembering only lies. This intruder was in fact a former temple guard, a role within the Jedi Order that demanded absolute emotional detachment. The temple guards were masked, anonymous protectors, and during the days of the Republic, they served under the temple's head of security, Master Sin Dralig, a Jedi master killed by Darth Vader during Order 66. While Darth Vader was putting the finishing touches on his repaired suit, Palpatine notified him that someone had infiltrated the Jedi Temple and ordered him to deal with a threat. The former temple guard made his way into the Jedi Library and began searching through its archive. He craved knowledge, the knowledge that the Jedi hoarded for themselves, and nobody was left to stop him, except the Dark Lord of the Sith himself, Darth Vader. To Vader's surprise, the Temple Guard ignited a lightsaber blade like his own. The improvements Vader made to his suit allowed him to react with similar skill to his pre-injury days. He slammed the intruder into the books, and the threat finally revealed itself to be Palin a race of humanoid people from the planet Utapau, a world covered in enormous sinkholes. Much to Vader's confusion, the Palin wore an imperial crest on his shoulder, the symbol of the new galactic empire. He struck at Vader wildly, attacking with much anger, but no refined skill. He accused Vader of wanting all the knowledge in the archives for himself, and the intruder was determined to keep Vader away from it. He held his lightsaber up and revealed a feature that would terrify any normal foe, activating a mechanism that spun the blade around at a high speed, able to effortlessly slice the most targets with ease. Vader defended himself against the assault and it appeared as if the intruder had the upper hand. In just a few moments, Vader would be on his knees begging for his life. But Vader was merely testing his new suit, pushing his movements to their limits before revealing the ultimate weakness of such a fearsome weapon. The center was an obvious weak point and completely unprotected. Vader thrust his lightsaber into the opening and swiped up, destroying the weapon. The intruder was amazed by Darth Vader's skill and demanded to know who he was. Vader raised his arm and prepared his final strike. But the voice of Palpatine commanded him to stop. The Emperor appeared and introduced Vader to the intruder. The ex-Jedi Temple Guard had abandoned his name long ago, and was now known as the Grand Inquisitor, one of Palpatine's best-kept secrets. Palpatine had orchestrated the entire encounter by promising the Grand Inquisitor all the knowledge inside the Jedi Temple. He desired to test them both. While Vader passed the test by defeating the Grand Inquisitor in combat, Palpatine expressed disappointment that the Inquisitor was defeated with very little effort from Darth Vader. It was time for Vader to learn more of Palpatine's secrets and introduce his apprentice 
to the Inquisitorius. Together, they travel to the industrial district of Coruscant, where Palpatine had hidden the base of operations of the Inquisitorius from public view for some time, and the Emperor revealed the important role they played within the Empire. The ranks of the Inquisitors were filled with former Jedi, all tainted by the dark side of the Force for multiple reasons. Some became disillusioned with the Jedi, some were tortured into submission, convinced they were abandoned by the Jedi. But they weren't Sith. The Inquisitors were merely tools of the Sith, tools to be used for a specific purpose, to hunt down Jedi survivors of Order 66 and enforce the Emperor's will over the galaxy. The Grand Inquisitor was one of the first and highest ranking members, and the rest were stripped of their names, now holding the titles of brother or sister. Vader immediately suspected that Palpatine would have replaced him had the Grand Inquisitor won their battle. But the Inquisitor still had much to learn. Palpatine placed them under the command of Darth Vader, and ordered his apprentice to mold them into an unstoppable Jedi hunting fighting force. And the Dark Lord of the Sith would not be a forgiving teacher. His training was brutal and aimed at exploiting their weaknesses, even going as far as slicing their limbs off without hesitation. The Grand Inquisitor questioned what such tactics would teach them, and Vader answered simply with, loss. Having experienced his own losses, Vader knew the Inquisitors would never forget their failures. The constant torture and injury suffered pushed the recruits further into the dark side of the Force, and medical droids were on standby repairing their injuries and augmenting them with cybernetic replacements. At their current skill level, Vader found them to be quite pathetic. The Inquisitors were former Jedi Knights, and still fought like Jedi, focusing on defensive strategies, moving only to attack when there was no other choice, instead of striking with powerful offensive techniques. For now, Vader would allow the Inquisitors to continue their training. In the meantime, he would begin the hunt for the Jedi. With the Grand Inquisitor at his side, Vader pulled up a list of the Emperor's priority targets. Consisting of confirmed and suspected survivors of Order 66, and one name in particular was listed as a high priority, Jocasta Nu. Although Vader would follow Palpatine's orders without question, he still pondered why Jocasta knew was such a high-value target. He remembered her from his time as a Jedi Knight, as an elderly master, managing the Jedi Library. Neither of them had ever seen her in combat, and she didn't seem to pose any serious threat. But Palpatine believed that she was likely the biggest threat to his new empire. As the chief librarian of the Jedi Archives, she knew everything. From the point of view of the Sith, the Jedi had spent millennia hoarding knowledge in ancient sites, essentially taking ownership of the Force for themselves. Jocasta Jocastanu had deep knowledge of the Jedi Order, the secrets the library held, both of the light side and the dark side, knowledge that even some of the highest ranking Jedi weren't aware of. And the Grand Inquisitor had a deep hatred for her. When he was a Jedi, he desired access to more knowledge, some of which was forbidden, and Jocastanu would never allow him. He believed she looked down on him as a lower class of Jedi, and now he desired nothing but her destruction. At Vader's command, the Grand Inquisitor began searching the archives of the Jedi Library for possible hints of where survivors may be hiding, family connections, personal information, anything. And the Emperor was right to fear her. Jocasta knew was hiding off-world and already well into the work of ensuring a future for the Jedi Order. She couldn't allow their deaths to be in vain and poured all of her knowledge into holocrons, information storage devices that could be accessed by the use of the Force. Ancient lessons, the history of the Jedi, all of her secrets were being saved for a future generation. While Jocasta worked, she was attended to by her loyal friend Gar, a man that believed in the mission of the Jedi and assisted her in organizing and cataloging the vast archive of knowledge that she had already saved. Although he was becoming concerned with her well-being, spending vast amount of times with her work, he understood the importance of the mission. Jocasta was hiding the holocrons just below, behind a waterfall, where the Empire couldn't easily find it. Gar suggested that after her work was complete, they could leave together and live whatever kind of life they desired, enjoying the safety of being anonymous. The archive didn't need her to maintain it, but Gar didn't grasp the full extent of Jocasta's plans. What she built was more than a secret library. It was a school, and a school needed students. Palpatine's greatest fear was that the Jedi Order would be rebuilt, and that's precisely the idea that Jocasta knew represented. She had one more mission left before she could begin the most important part of the work, a mission that forced her to return to Coruscant the very heart of the Empire. She had no choice and flew her Jedi Starfighter back to her old home, leaving her astromech droid B2 behind to watch over the ship. She had a plan in place in case her ship were discovered. Coruscant was more dangerous than ever for a Jedi. They were declared public enemy number one by the Emperor, and the streets were patrolled by a heavy amount of clone troopers, all programmed to believe the Jedi were traitors to the Republic, and led by CC-1010, a clone known as Commander Fox. After the end of the Clone Wars, all remaining clones were reassigned to new roles 
roles, and Fox served as commander of the Coruscant Guard, elite shock troopers patrolling as military police in the capital. Jocasta had to get through them without alerting suspicion, and she used the force power known as the Jedi Mind Trick to convince them she was a nobody. They saw nothing at all, and she crossed safely to a secret entrance, underneath the Jedi Temple Library. Palpatine knew that the Temple Archives held an immensely important treasure that he required. Jocasta was its custodian, and only she knew where it was hidden. Upon entering the Jedi Temple, Jocasta was horrified to see what the Empire had done. What was once a place of reverence and beauty was now lying in ruins, uncared for and thrown aside. A testament to Palpatine's disdain of the Jedi. Back where her Jedi Starfighter was hidden, B2 was on the verge of being discovered by Imperial City workers. Their sensors picked up a strange energy reading momentarily, and it led them to where the ship was hidden. If a Jedi Starfighter were discovered, that would be the end of Jocasta's anonymity. Every clone in the area would be searching for her. B2 warned Jocasta that he was about to be discovered, and the plan to hide the evidence of her presence was activated. As soon as the doors opened and the workers gazed upon what was unmistakably a Jedi Starfighter, B2 activated a self-destruct mechanism and obliterated the ship. In the archives, the Grand Inquisitor plundered the library. Although he was supposed to be specifically looking for ties to surviving Jedi, he took the chance to indulge in the knowledge that was denied to him for so long. Jocasta knew was just above on the nearby walkways looking down below in disgust at the being tainting the archive books. But the mission came first. She had to focus and find the treasure that could one day bring hope back to the galaxy. The the location where a Jedi starfighter exploded was being treated as a crime scene. The Imperials believed it was no more than a bomb, since small pockets of insurgency were already beginning to take shape. Small groups of people speaking out against the Empire, pro-Jedi graffiti, nothing in this crime scene provided any serious concerns. But the officer in charge discovered a piece of the ship with the insignia of the Jedi Order. Improbable to him since the Jedi were mostly extinguished, but new Imperial laws dictated that even the smallest hint of Jedi activity needed to be reported. And the officer prepared to report his findings to his new superior, a man he'd never met or seen before, with a name that seemed strange to him, Darth Vader. In his quarters, Darth Vader was in a deep state of meditation, feeling a spiritual manifestation within the Force, within himself. Darkness was all around, a lonely, desolate area, where a dark mass of energy taking humanoid form represented Vader, his missing limbs, once belonging to Anakin Skywalker, glowing a bright white, and the tiniest portions of the light hidden deep within Vader fluttered around him with nowhere to go. And suddenly, Vader heard his name, pulling him out of his meditation. The servant attending him informed him that the ISB, the Imperial Security, Security Bureau reported a possible disturbance in the city, possibly connected to a Jedi. Vader grabbed his lightsaber and rushed to the scene, but Jocasta knew was safely in the library, accessing a secret passageway only she was aware of. She rearranged the books in a specific fashion and the doorway opened to a chamber hiding many secrets. Inside, she was greeted by a guardian protector droid designated as Kator. Since the fall of the Jedi, Kator was protecting these chambers and ensured that everything was left untouched. Darth Vader watched as the ISB investigated the remains of the wreckage, and the officer in charge introduced himself, unsure how to address Vader. Vader pointed out that he should be addressed as Lord. The ISB stood by their belief that the wreckage was simply a bomb covered in graffiti that was intended for another part of the city and went off prematurely. But Vader knew better. His years as a Jedi Knight and experience with technology taught him to recognize exactly what he was looking at. The ISB officer was offended to be talked down to and stated that Vader was simply there as a courtesy. But Vader clenched his fist and the wreckage quickly came together close to its original form. It was indeed the remains of a Jedi Starfighter and the astromech droid that maintained it. The ISB officer fearfully claimed that they would have figured it out correctly in time. Vader might have executed him on the spot, but there was no time. A Jedi was on the planet, and an incompetent ISB officer wasn't worth his time. He turned around and left to investigate the Jedi Temple, where Jocasta knew had just located the treasure she was searching for, a database that contained the information of every Force-sensitive child in the galaxy that the Jedi knew of. Students she could recruit to restart the Jedi Order. It was time to find a way off-world. On her way out of the Jedi Library, she caught a glimpse of the Grand Inquisitor, disrespecting the knowledge that she had so carefully spent years of her life cataloging and safeguarding. With no other threat in sight, she decided to act, and jump down in front of the Grand Inquisitor. She completely caught him off guard and threatened him with her lightsaber, but an unstoppable danger was on the way. Darth Vader was being transported to the Jedi Temple, where he suspected the Jedi was hiding. When he landed, he was greeted by Commander Fox, and he made it clear that nobody was allowed to enter or exit the temple unless authorized by the Emperor or himself. Commander Fox made the mistake of asking for more information from Vader, 
requesting to know about who they were facing in order to make better tactical decisions. Commander Fox was a clone that Vader was already familiar with and had very little patience for. During the Clone Wars, Anakin Skywalker's Padawan, Ahsoka Tano, was falsely accused of a crime she didn't commit, and while she was jailed, Commander Fox was the clone that prevented Anakin Skywalker from seeing her. I said, my Padawan is in there. Now step aside. General Skywalker, Admiral Tarkin has ordered that no one be allowed in there. I don't care what she's accused of. Let. Me. In. Sorry, sir. The Admiral's orders stand. This is now a military operation, and under his jurisdiction. Fox was already on thin ice with Vader, and he immediately brought Fox's service into question, asking if he participated in Order 66. All the clones on Coruscant did their part and followed orders, and Vader responded that they obviously failed and missed some Jedi. Inside the temple, Jocasta held the Grand Inquisitor at lightsaber point and demanded to know who he was. He was furious that she didn't recognize him, as many times as she denied him access to secret knowledge. But Jocasta saw many Jedi in the library day in and day out. It was no surprise his identity didn't seem familiar but he remembered her vividly and struck with his saber. She was a Jedi traitor that had to be destroyed. Jocasta saw the red blade and believed the Grand Inquisitor was a Sith, but he clarified that he was no Sith. Maybe never, but he was satisfied with the power he found within the fury of the dark side. As she defended herself, Jocasta questioned why he would dare betray his Jedi brothers and sisters. Even as a Jedi, however, the Grand Inquisitor held much resentment inside. He never felt truly accepted, never at ease in the temple. They took him from his family as a child, child, trained him to protect the very temple that kept secrets from him. He often dreamed of killing her, but during the time of the Republic, the other Jedi would have surely stopped him before he could have a chance. Now the Jedi were gone, and he finally had his chance to end her. He gleefully prepared to strike her down until Vader appeared and blocked his attack. The Emperor wanted Jocasta Nu alive. The knowledge she held was too valuable to allow her to be destroyed, at least for the time being. Vader demanded that the Grand Inquisitor stand back and cease fighting, but his emotions were taking over his actions. He argued with Vader and began doubting his loyalties, but a being like Vader didn't require trust, simply obedience. Jocasta took the opportunity to attempt her escape. She used the Force and hurled a large collection of books onto her attackers. The Grand Inquisitor was unprepared for the attack and fell unconscious, buried underneath the pile while Vader stood up angrily and followed her trail. He called out to her, promising that she would not be harmed. Jocasta's voice echoed through the halls of the library from the security room. She could feel the terrifying grip of the dark side pouring from within Vader, and realized that he played a huge part in the destruction of the Jedi. She knew that she was at high risk of being captured under the current conditions, and she was needed to navigate the information found within the archives, information that was too important to end up in the hands of the Empire. With a heavy heart, she made the decision to purge the information within, deleting all the data from existence. The Jedi Library was now a useless ruin to the Emperor, but the well-being of the Archives wasn't Darth Vader's current concern. He was ordered to retrieve Jocasta, and he refused to fail his master. At the entrance to Jocasta's secret chambers, the Guardian droid Kator quickly analyzed Darth Vader with a detailed bioscan and determined the identity under the suit the identity of Jedi Master Anakin Skywalker. Hearing his old name sent Vader into a frenzy. He hurled his lightsaber at the droid, but the Guardian droid was programmed to defend against multiple forms of lightsaber combat, and quickly grabbed the blade by its hilt. The droid once again referred to Vader as Master Skywalker, and formally told him he wasn't cleared access to this area. Vader lunged at the droid and thrust his cybernetic fist at the body. The force of the impact sent Kator's arm flying, and it countered by grabbing Vader's hand and crushing it. His other hand was still free, however, and his fist went through the droid's head, disabling it permanently. Nothing remained in Vader's way, and soon enough, he would have Jocasta Nu, or so he believed. While Vader was distracted with the Guardian droid, Jocasta was preparing an experimental weapon, hidden in the archives, and loaded her lightsaber on top of it. By the time Vader realized he underestimated her, the weapon was charged, and a shot was fired directly at him. With barely any time to react, he quickly lifted his lightsaber and attempted to deflect the blast, and he realized this was no normal blaster bolt. It felt as if he was deflecting a lightsaber, but the beam had a constant 
absolute incredible force. If he tried to push it back any longer, his strength would give out. He had no choice but to thrust his body to the side out of the way, and the beam shrieked past him, going directly through a wall and creating an enormous hole. Joe Costa knew stood in front of Vader holding the weapon that almost killed him. A lightsaber rifle. A weapon that used a lightsaber as its primary source of power. Instead of igniting a controlled blade to be used as a sword, the lightsaber rifle transformed the energy filtered through the kyber crystal into an unstable, high-speed blast of lightsaber energy. Vader commanded her to drop the weapon and allow herself to be taken immediately, and he once again reiterated he did not want her to die. Without hesitation, Jocasta lifted the lightsaber rifle and sent another blast at Vader. This time he was ready and avoided the multiple shots fired at him. And Jocasta revealed that she knew the truth. She overheard the droid earlier identify him as Anakin Skywalker, a young Jedi Knight known very well to her. And the events of the Clone Wars suddenly made sense. It all came together. The sadness and pain she could see in the final message that Obi-Wan left for the Jedi, telling them to stay away from the Jedi Temple. She realized that Palpatine was the Sith Lord the Jedi spent years looking for, and Anakin the hope of the Jedi was his target, twisted and corrupted from his purpose. At the same time, she pitied Vader, once a great Jedi Knight, now more comparable to a droid, following the orders he was programmed to follow. With an exhausted Vader in her sights, Jocasta knew prepared a final blast, and as she pulled the trigger, a click. The rifle had exhausted its energy source, leaving her lightsaber useless and melted. It was time for the conflict to end. Darth Vader calmly turned off his weapon and gave his word that she would not be harmed. After using up its power source, the lightsaber rifle became unstable, and in a desperate final attack, Jocasta thrust it at Vader and it exploded. The blast sent both Jocasta Nu and Vader flying just outside, some of Commander Fox's clone troopers saw the explosion. It left a gaping hole on the side of the temple. This was Jocasta's chance to escape. Before heading out, she grabbed a lightsaber from one of the temple shelves and ran. But escape would not be so easy. The clones had already surrounded the area and opened fire. The moment they saw the lightsaber ignite, they knew they had a Jedi in their sights. Jocasta struggled to deflect such a large amount of simultaneous blaster bolts and jumped down to confront the clones directly at close range. The clones yelled for backup through their communications systems, and Commander Fox received the transmission from the other side of the temple. Much needed reinforcements were on the way. Jocasta used the force to send the clones rocketing through the air, and suddenly they saw the image of another being holding a lightsaber. Another Jedi, Darth Vader. Jocasta took pleasure seeing Vader being held back by the blaster fire. Now he knew how the Jedi felt, forced to defend themselves against such large numbers before being destroyed. When Commander Fox arrived with his troops, he zoomed in and saw both Jocasta, Nu, and Darth Vader defending themselves against the clones, and his blood ran cold. Commander Fox had made a fatal mistake. Darth Vader was still new to the Empire, and Fox had failed to provide the men on the other side of the temple with Vader's description. Understandably, they assumed he was simply another Jedi. In a panic, Fox yelled orders to cease fire immediately and pulled up to collect Darth Vader from the temple. Vader jumped into the ship and questioned why Commander Fox didn't provide his troops with his description. Commander Fox, filled with dread, struggled to come up with an explanation. But Darth Vader was done with him. His incompetence would be answered with a quick snap of the neck, ending the life of C.C. 1010. Commander Fox. Down below, Jocasta Nu was still struggling to keep the clone troopers at bay, and they were beginning to overtake her. A blaster bolt struck her, and the lightsaber she was wielding, her only weapon remaining, was lost. She knew it was over. The clones surrounded her and demanded surrender, as Vader flew in to claim his victory, and she chose to destroy herself, falling backwards to her demise. Vader would not allow it. He saved her from the fall, and ordered the clones to bring her aboard the ship. Jocasta Nu was captured, and the clones searching her found the treasure that she retrieved from the temple a memory crystal. Darth Vader grabbed it and inserted it into his suit to be analyzed. Through his visor, he discovered what the Emperor wanted so badly. It was a list of children, the names of four sensitive beings spread throughout the galaxy, unknowingly waiting to be recruited by the Jedi. The list was complete with locations, birth dates, everything needed to find them. Vader questioned what her intentions were. Did she intend to recruit the children herself and reform the Jedi Order? And Jocasta taunted him with the truth. Palpatine ordered Vader to keep her alive, and Vader did didn't even know why. She didn't see the terrifying cybernetic Sith Lord Darth Vader in front of her, but merely a deluded, misguided boy, manipulated by the Emperor to serve his every whim. Jocasta pointed out what she believed was Palpatine's obvious intentions. He wanted the list to make more Vaders, more dark side servants that would answer to him, which begged the question, what were his plans for Darth Vader? 
a clone trooper threatened to stun her and shut down her Jedi lies, and Jocasta knew revealed that they were taking orders from a Jedi, the legendary master Anakin Skywalker, hero of the Clone Wars. The clones looked at Darth Vader in disbelief. They all heard the stories of a Skywalker, a man respected immensely among their ranks. And with a powerful blow, Vader sent the clones out of the ship, falling to their demise. Darth Vader had worked too hard to erase the legacy of Anakin Skywalker and couldn't risk anyone knowing his true identity. There was only Darth Vader. Dark Lord of the Sith. He blamed Jocasta Nu for the death of the clones. Although he promised that she wouldn't be harmed, it was now clear to him that she knew too much. He ignited his blade and struck her down against the Emperor's wishes. He allowed the ship to crash, becoming a fiery wreckage. If Palpatine could lie so boldly to Darth Vader and hide secrets from him, Vader could do the same. He reported to his master that Jocasta Nu attempted to escape and perished during the attempt. The Emperor expressed disappointment that Vader failed to bring her in alive and asked if he learned anything before her death. Vader held the list of four sensitives in his hand and answered, no then crushed it beyond repair, denying Palpatine access to the children. Could this have been a small shred of Anakin Skywalker re-emerging for just a moment, an act meant to keep the Emperor from harming another as he had been? Or was Vader merely protecting himself by preventing the Emperor from one day replacing him? In either case, the hunt for Jocasta Nu was over. Back in her secret Jedi school, filled with the knowledge she poured into the holocrons, her friend and servant Gar awaited her return. Years passed, and it was obvious that she wasn't coming back. With a great sadness for the loss of his friend and the failure of her mission, Gar decided it was time to seal the vault. He detonated an explosive and collapsed the entire structure. If the Force was as powerful as the Jedi made it seem, nothing could stop it, and one day a Jedi would discover the secrets Jocasta Nu left behind. A Jedi that would accomplish the mission of recreating the Order. If you'd like to support my work, I invite you to become a patron. There's multiple levels of support available. Or for an option right here on YouTube, you can become a channel member and gain access to exclusive badges and emojis for live streams and exclusive polls. Every dollar helps keep the wheels turning, and I'd like to thank my current patrons and channel members for their continued support. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications, and make sure you follow me on social media so you never miss a thing. I'll catch you guys later.